In order to understand Microsoft's business intelligence vision in 2010, I want to use my vegetable garden and a bit of cookery. Now, if you imagine this is my data warehouse, a user might come along and think, I want to cook something, I want to make my own, I want to cook it myself, and I need some stuff that's in here. So we might have some of these, but we don't want any of those. Not all data inside a business is inside the data warehouse. Some of it resides elsewhere. So in my example, I'm now in my herb garden to get some more information. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that data is also needed from external sources. So you have to bring that into the mix as well. Now I've got all my ingredients for my meal together. Of course, in the world of business intelligence, rounding up your data has traditionally been very difficult. What we're able to do now, using the um, Power Pivot functionality in Excel 2010, is to give users a familiar Excel interface to go and get the data they need to prepare their business intelligence. If you want to see how that works in detail, please click on the link below. Of course, having got my ingredients, I now need to prepare them. To prepare data in Power Pivot, what you do is identify how the individual pieces of data that you've already collected are joined together. To see how to do that, click on the link below while I chop these leaks up. And now we're ready to start cooking with our data. And what this means in Power Pivot is that we start slicing and dicing the data. And to do that, of course, traditionally, we'd use the pivot table. And that's exactly what Power Pivot enables the users to do. But we've got some new exciting features in Excel 2010 anyway, like the slices that make this a lot easier to do. Nearly as easy as cooking a good risotto. Again, if you want to have a look at how to do all of this, and see my demo of it, then you should just click on the link at the bottom of the screen. The best thing about cooking a meal is sharing it with somebody else. In the world of Power Pivot, we do our sharing using SharePoint. The user is simply able to upload a workbook onto SharePoint 2010 with the Power Pivot add-in installed, and other users can not only see the work, but also interact with it. If you want to see how that works, please click on the link below, while I tuck into this lovely meal with my gorgeous wife. Here you are, darling. delicious. But now I need to tidy up. In the world of Power Pivot, we need to be cognizant of housekeeping as well, because if users are continually posting up their Power Pivots onto a SharePoint site, it will eventually slow down the server, no matter how big that server is. So we need to understand what's being used, what's important and what isn't. And there are tools inside the Power Pivot add-in for SharePoint 2010 to enable you to do this. And to see how that works, please click on the link below. So what I've hopefully shown you over the last few minutes is that Power Pivot allows users to gather their data, prepare it, analyze it, present it, and then it allows the IT pro to keep a handle on what's going on with that data. If you want to try this for yourselves, then you're going to need to download SQL Server 2008 R2, SharePoint 2010, and the Power Pivot add-in for Excel 2010. I've put all the links for all those things and some other resources as well at the end of this video. Thank you very much for listening. I've been Andrew Fryer. And I'd better go on the washing up.